Hello everyone, I'm here with our Lay Communications Minister, Ministry Minister Person for Lay Communications, Kathleen Winder, who um, is talking with me about how hard it is, we think, to do church in 2019 in Chattanooga, maybe anywhere, but specifically Chattanooga, and especially being an Episcopal church out here in the middle of nowhere. And some of the things that we might think about in terms of challenges and what we might do to be church a little bit better. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, in today's day and age, so many people have thousands of things that they can do on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, and living in the South, there are thousands of churches. Um, here in Chattanooga, we actually have 11 Episcopal churches um, in our county. Um, I'm from a town where there's only one Episcopal church for about 45 minutes. So um, as an Episcopalian, there weren't a lot of options, um, although my home church was amazing. Um, <laughs> in Chattanooga, I'm actually affiliated with about four or five different Episcopal churches and missions. Um, although all the Episcopal churches are very similar, um, there's a lot of things that are different about each of them. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Exactly. They all mm -hmm. have their own um, focuses for different missions. And of course, they all have different um, clergy and lay people leading them. Um, so it can oftentimes be very difficult to decide um, what church to go to on Sunday morning or whether you're going to go to church or not at all. Yeah, so we talked about there's that group of people who wake up on a regular basis and think, you know, I want to go to church on Sunday. Where should I go to church? I'm an Episcopalian. Let me find an Episcopal church that fits what I want, what I'm hoping for, what God is up to in my life. That might be a step too far. People might not think quite like that. I hope they do building that spiritual maturity. But just thinking about things like, you know, I want to go to church, and then they make a decision about where they want to go to church. I think you and I are wondering about those people who wake up and think something like, man, I really need to get connected, or I need a community, or I need a purpose in my life, or I need to do something other than try to make money all the time, and I'm not sure what I believe, and I've heard some really strange things about churches, I don't know where to go or what to do. And it's that group of folks mm -hmm. that we're wondering about how we connect with. Because I think, you correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think that the folks who have made a decision about being Episcopalians, they have made a decision among those 11 Episcopal <laughs> churches in Chattanooga. We've got those folks covered. I'm wondering about how we make a connection maybe with somebody else. Absolutely. So um, as Episcopalians, Evangelism is kind of a tricky subject for all of us. We don't want to be too forward and outright to the point where we feel like we might be um, um, putting, our, putting our spirituality or religion on another person, um, but we should still be open to being open about our religion and our faith and really living that out in our day-to-day -day lives, as well as being able to have conversations with our friends or even strangers um, while we're um, ministering to them and being in relationship with them in everyday life. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a priest, and you would think that this would come naturally to me. Mm -hmm. But I think like, my biggest opportunity to have these kind of conversations out in my life is climbing. And many of the folks that I've met who do climbing church is not a part of their vocabulary. Their, their church is a rock on a Sunday morning, right? But I've had some, I've been able to figure out some ways to have some meaningful conversations with those folks. And I'll say something like, um, so how did you grow up? Did you grow up in a faith tradition or did you grow up going to church? And I usually hear stories of good and bad stories about people's experiences. And then I find an inroad is there anything that you do when you have these kind of conversations? Or do you just never have these kind of It's kind of hard. I think you're right. You said earlier, it kind of feels intrusive. Right. Um, sometimes I do have these conversations, um, especially with um, friends that I've had for a while. A lot of um, 
my older friends that I've known for a while or new friends when I tell them that I work for several churches, I live in a church, um, a lot of my life's work has been involved with the church there. Um, sometimes apprehensive or sometimes curious um, and whenever I'm able to share what my experience in the church has been and um, what the Episcopal Church believes they're always um, very intrigued by what I have to say um, sometimes when I am having that conversation with new people they get a little scared um, they are kind of freaked out because of their um, experience with Christianity and um, religiosity, if that's a word, <laughs> in the past. Um, and I'm able to kind of say, um, my experience hasn't quite been like that, um, and maybe apologize if they have had a bad experience. Um, but trying to show them that the Episcopal Church is a little different and doesn't um, necessarily fit into the mold that some people um, have had experience with growing up um, with different denominations or um, beliefs around Christianity. Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people are expecting you to kind of like put it on them to say, um, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to come to church? I find that um, in these conversations, it's always surprising to me is that um, people are always super curious and open and wanting to know about my experiences, like things that I experience. And I will say, you know, um, as an Episcopal priest and as an Episcopalian, you know, I've never watched an Episcopalian die alone. That's something that I talk to people about, that, that in that most crucial, difficult, holy moment in their lives, people come around them. And that's, for me, that's a huge part about why I'm a part of this community. And, and not just die this ultimate death, but die the little deaths too. Like when people really struggle with things like cancer or divorce or setbacks or lost jobs or broken hearts or addiction, that people who are part of uh, the communities that I've been a part of, and when I've experienced those things, I've watched people just show up with casseroles or shawls or uh, uh, deep friendships or good conversations or hugs or visits or cards or just coming around folks or shared experiences and that this thing I've, I've watched it time and time again make all the difference in the world and that we as Episcopalians are less interested in the specifics of what you believe and more interested in a willingness to demonstrate how God loves us and shows up in our lives. Absolutely. Um, my experience with the church has been um, similar in a lot of ways. I think that one of my favorite parts about the church is the unconditional love um, that you receive here, um, as well as that um, family and that community that will really take care of you. Um, and that has been a large part of my spiritual formation and um, my belief and one of the reasons as a young person that I am still involved and very passionate about the church. Yeah. And so um, what we would like to invite you to do is think about how you might have these conversations in your own life in a way that feels safe to you and comfortable and not awkward and not intrusive and not too risky, but maybe a little bit risky. Just figure out how you might move into having these kind of conversations about talking to people about why, why this experience of community and God's love and church and faith are important to you. But also to know that we're trying to build some of these opportunities. So we have a group that meets every other week called the Resurrection Group that's talking about how to get in touch with the community. So if you're curious about this sort of thing, come and join that group and just hear them and share your ideas and hear their ideas. And if you have ideas, share those with us and we will put those out there. Um, so is there anything else? <laughs> no. no. So, I, I, uh, so this has been the first of many conversations Kathleen Robert conversations that you will be a part of. So be looking forward to that. Okay, bye everybody.